Hey everybody, Jason here. Now, as Eli put out his top 10 most anticipated Wii U list earlier this week, it inspired me to make my own top 10 most anticipated Wii U indie game list. So as you know, on Indie Corner, I cover a lot of indie games, and I thought I'd share what, uh, what are my top 10 personally. So this, of course, does not reflect anyone else's opinion. It's my own, and if you're interested in that, well, keep on watching the show, or keep on watching this video. So starting off, we have number 10, Road Redemption. Not sure whether to call this a racing game or a fighting game, but regardless, getting to fight it off on a motorcycle with various weapons just looks plain fun. The game offers plenty of different mission types, such as combat race, police escapes, convoy assaults, but one of my most anticipated modes is Escape from Enemy Territory, where you'll be jumping between rooftops trying to escape from a rival motorcycle club. Single player aside though, this is one title I would probably enjoy more with friends, making this game one of my most anticipated multiplayer games. Number 9, Typo Man. We haven't seen a lot from Typo Man, but the concept trailer was enough to get me interested. Typo Man is a 2D puzzle platformer where moving around letters in the world will help you solve puzzles. For example, you'll push the letter D into a rain cloud that has rain written on it to create the word drain and empty the water preventing you from moving forward. Just that one puzzle was pretty cool that I'm really curious to see what more this game has to offer. Number 8, A Hat in Time. A Hat in Time promises to offer gamers something that's been sorely lacking since the days of the Nintendo 64, which are collectathons. I love the old Banjo-Kazooie, Donkey Kong 64, and Spyro games for their collecting nature. It's probably why I spent so many countless hours picking up useless collectibles in other games such as Assassin's Creed 4. From what A Hat in Time has shown so far, it looks like a game that will feed off my nostalgia and deliver the long-awaited scratch to my 3D collectathon itch. The story revolves around collecting timepieces around the universe to stop the mustache girl, and with the famous composer Grant Kirkhope helping out, I'm sure this one will be a hit. Number 7, Mighty Number no. 9. Mighty Number no. 9 is to the Mega Man series what Mega Man X was to NES Mega Man. It's the evolution of something that's already great. With Kaiji Inafune at the helm, the creator of the original Mega Man series, it's hard not to get excited for this game. Mighty No. 9 will be your typical run, jump, and shoot 2D platformer, but toss in the ability to transform into different shapes based on what bosses you've defeated. The latest trailers look really fun, and I can't wait to get my Mega Man, or should I say Beck, fix. Number 6, Oliver and Spike Dimension Jumpers. This game caught my attention before I played Guacamelee and got to experience a game that uses dimension jumping. Nevertheless, Oliver and Spike seems to take the concept in Guacamelee and turn it up a notch by not just having you jump between two dimensions, but multiple dimensions, each one being entirely different. You might be in the air one second and submerge underwater the next. Each dimension will also have its own game mechanics unique to them, adding a lot of depth to the game. The game promises plenty of puzzles, exploration, and some combat. All this wrapped up in a beautiful 3D world is enough to make me drool over this one. Number 5, Earthlock Festival of Magic. With life taking up more and more of my gaming time, I've slowly walked away from many RPGs simply because of the lack of time. Earthlock Festival of Magic, however, has re-sparked my interest and I might have to create enough time so that I can try it out. I love the visual style of the game, avoiding realism and maintaining that charm that can only be found in something a bit more cartoonish. I'm also loving that the developers are choosing a turn-based combat approach. Call me old-fashioned, but I just find it more enjoyable to have the time to think my strategy through and not have to rush through menu selects. Of course, an RPG has no interest for me if the story can't draw me in, and from the overview, I'm already intrigued. A desert scavenger sees his hometown destroyed and goes off on a quest for vengeance across the world. Yeah, count me in. Number 4, Hive Jump. The soundtrack to the first trailer I watched instantly grabbed me. Hive Jump is by far my most anticipated multiplayer game on my list. The game has you jumping into alien hive colonies and you'll blast your way deep into it until you find and kill the queen. Sounds a lot like Starship Troopers, right? And that's exactly why I can't wait to play this with my friends. I watched that movie so many times as a kid. Also, Graphite Lab has really put in a lot of love and effort into this game as can be seen through their Twitch channel and the amount of guns and features they've been constantly adding to the game. 
On top of the fun running and shooting gameplay, there's also a strategic element where the war against the aliens will be impacted depending on which hive you jump into. Number 3. Angry Video Game Nerd Adventures Being a huge fan of 2D platformers and the AVGN series, this is one title I've been holding out for a long time. While the game has been released on Steam already, I've made a conscious choice not to play it until it hits consoles out of sheer principle. The AVGN would not have it any other way. Not only is the game filled with tons of references to the web show, but the difficulty of the game is set high enough that you'll be smashing your controller and throwing anger fits more often than is healthy. However, that rewarding rush and intense sense of satisfaction that you can only get from beating games of this difficulty will make it all worthwhile. Number 2, Affordable Space Adventures. I wasn't completely sold on this title until after I played a demo and saw their most recent trailer. The game is very innovative in how it uses the gamepad to offer players a dashboard of sorts to the spaceship. In the game you're given a very basic hunk of junk kind of spacecraft and you go around space exploring. I love the idea of starting out with a barely functional piece of junk and having to tweak each part of the ship to solve puzzles. In one trailer, they show how you need to lower the power to your thrusters so you can generate less heat and go by a scanner undetected. It reminds me a lot of that relationship Han Solo has with the Millennium Falcon, and who wouldn't want to play a game that can make you feel the same way? Number 1! Nefarious Nefarious is another great looking game that recently came out alongside many new indie projects. It takes the traditional 2D platformers and flips it on its head letting you play as the villain in capturing princesses. Your character comes equipped with a special power glove that can be used and upgraded in various ways, similar to the Mega Buster in Mega Man. Additionally, each princess you kidnap will affect gameplay differently so that the game is constantly challenging you by switching up the gameplay and offering new tools to try. One aspect of this game that really has me intrigued are the boss fights. Instead of trying to exploit weak points, this time you're the boss with all the cool stuff and you have to stop the underdog hero. For gameplay, great aesthetics, and a concept that is so fresh and looks fun, Nefarious makes it to my number one most anticipated Wii U indie game. And so those are the top 10 games I'm most anticipated, which are of course indie and coming to the Wii U. Are any of you guys excited for these games as well? Is this the first time you hear about it? Please let me know in the comments below and do share your own list with me. Thanks for sticking around. I'll see you guys next time.